Welcome back to Pacific Drive. We are partway through our mission of trying to link up some stabilizers. So we've got stabilizer Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie to link up here in the blistering woods, which should help us find new pathways deeper into the zone. We are right here. It's my turn to give you an explanation about the mass hallucination event that Tobias and Francis were going on about. But don't worry, I won't be nearly as long-winded. Because there honestly isn't much that we know about it. It happened on the morning of September 14th, 1961. My colleague, Dr. James Kay, was conducting experiments at a highly classified site in the Deep Zone. He was assisted by my husband, Dr. Alan Turner. At 0400, their experiment unleashed a gamma ray surge that instantly killed both of them. The surge was an impossible amount of energy, orders of magnitude greater than any man-made source. It also triggered hallucinations in anyone awake within a 10-mile radius. It was a burst of widespread insanity, but only for a short moment. What's going on here? Also, I need to refuel. Let's use the large one for that. Oh, right, I put it in the side thing. Oh wow, that's gonna get us to full. Why do I have so much food? I really don't need it. Oh right, I forgot about that cork. It's also not any particular reason to get rid of the food, so why not? Okay, is this a new... Yeah, it's a new anomaly. Shocked tourist. <laughs> you know what? It's an increasingly bad time in the zone these days. Every day when I step out my door. I should get a different job. I should do something else. It's getting worse. I swear these things are all but springing up out of thin air. And now we have this chain reaction thing. This brutal, deadly trap that just outright slaughters people. Whole lines of those dummies, any one of them capable of setting off all the rest. Seven people have died in three days. You know what it feels like to me? Like the zone is murdering us. Even like it enjoys doing so. It's as if something really, really doesn't want us here. And you know what? That's fine by me. Tomorrow morning, I'm out. I wonder if they still explode if you touch them. That shredder has like one HP left. Check out this building. I 
Wait, is that new? Yeah. Airstrip. Telephone transcript, 1964. Tobias? This is Francis Cook. Yeah, the scientist. I've got a bit of an update for you. I'm afraid it's bad news. Those drums of experimental gravity gel we were sending back to you are not going to get there. Neither is the truck, it seems. We had some kind of atmospheric shift, and then more anomalies than I think I've ever seen before. Everyone's safe, but our driver has a broken leg. As for the gel... Well, the whole strip of road between our lab site and that old gas station got smeared and scrambled, so now it's more like some kind of giant trampoline. I'm not kidding. Anything that touches that road just takes off. It's starting to spread to some of the forest and swamp nearby. It's not that the gel is just spilled on the ground. It's like it's a part of the ground now. A part of the earth itself. So I guess you can update your inventory logs on that. Is there some kind of maintenance request that I should file for this? Well, that just makes me kind of want to walk on it. If it's like a trampoline. Let's make another flare thing. Let's also make another scrapper. And for this one, I'm just going to toss off into the woods. Do you think I would die if I just touched it? Oh! Oh! Oh, that's really cool. I don't need that, but I mean, I could just... If I have extra room, I could just take it back and recycle it. Let's go for another ride. Pretty much in the zone. Is that a new phenomenon? Crackling Crawler. Answer phone message, 1975. Hey Jill, so we've been through the latest batch of tests and almost everything is a negative. You're right that this thing does respond to ground vibration and clearly senses nearby movement. Uh-oh. But beyond that, there's no reaction to any other kind of stimulus. Not light, not sound, not radiation, not any kind of changes in atmosphere, humidity, nothing. Best I can suggest right now is that its behavior is kind of territorial. Often attacking anything it senses is close. Wait. Not that I'm saying this thing is displaying intelligence, it's just some kind of chemical reaction. We're still saying that they aren't intelligent, right? And, uh, anyone even begin to figure out what these things might be made of yet? Detects movement. Okay. Well, it's definitely gonna feel the car.
Well, this has got to be the stabilizer. You lost? Find a coolant pipe and follow it. I'm not lost. Don't worry about me. Does a coolant pipe go here? Yeah, it looks like it. Zone stabilizer notes, 1971. It is reassuring to know we at least have some ability to temper this particularly demented flavor of meteorology that blights our atmosphere. The energy demands are truly monstrous, and the infrastructure we have had to construct and reconstruct is an engineering achievement in itself, but we have been successful. We have all but perfected the zone stabilizer. Perhaps now we will no longer be quite as subject to its whims. I believe that correctly activating stabilizers will now create gateways, though it will also precipitate dramatically dangerous zone storms. It is important that nobody uses or modifies these devices without explicit authorization. Okay, so doing this is going to cause a dramatically dangerous zone storm. Good to know. I can't remember if I was told that or not. I don't remember being told that, but I might have just missed it. Oh, that's not good. You know, 30 seconds of hallucinations. Sure didn't feel sure when I was free falling to outer space. Heck of a ride, though. Did you know the rings of Saturn sing? I saw disembodied arms. Tons of them. They were grasping and crawling. And, uh, what about you, Oppie? What did you see? I saw nothing. How is that possible? Everybody else saw something. Must have passed me by. I don't know what to tell you. But were you working in your lab that night? And weren't you supposed to be doing your research rather than keeping track of my whereabouts? <laughs> okay. Wow. Touchy. I'm going to head all the way around this road to this cluster here. Loot those and then keep on going. Given that a storm is probably going to come when I finish with the last stabilizer, I think I want to get all the sources of energy before activating the last one. some new way of using limb to motivate that gamma ray burst. Oh, yes, precisely. Where the gamma rays come from? But out of space. Feedback on planet Earth, kid. There are plenty of terrestrial sources of gamma rays. Thunderstorms, for example. No, 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 you, you said it yourself. We're about to go for a ride. From that night, much greater than anything we've seen on Earth. Sure, but going straight to aliens when there's countless perfectly scientific possibilities. Perhaps Dr. K and Alan developed a limb-assisted mass particle collision. Or, oh, heck, tapped into some sort of gamma ray reservoir. A reservoir? Or a portal? A portal? <laughs> to where, exactly? 
to Atlantis. Of course. Now, why didn't I think of that? That's absolutely it. Just found a new lab report. Number four. This is the real deal. This is how we truly make money for limb technology. Forget the physics. Forget the engineering. It's the chemistry. What we've got here is the secret to a host of new, more efficient catalysts. See, petroleum refining is dependent on a variety of catalysts, right? But there are a boatload of applications in everything, from pharmaceuticals to biocatalysts. They're the secret ingredient in so many modern industrial processes, and we have the key to lowering their activation energy to ludicrously low levels. Imagine how much the chemical and petroleum companies would pay for this. And if Arda won't sell, then we should really... Wait, we shouldn't talk about this here. I drove all the way from here to here because I thought this was an energy source, but actually, no, they're gateways. They're not energy sources. So, yeah, we don't have to worry about making sure we get all the energy sources before we unleash the storm. Let's continue on down this road to get here. Repaired the vehicle a little bit, by the way. Used up the last of my putty. Seemed like the front of the car had received a significant amount of damage. It was yellow. Not about to fall off, but why not fix it? There it is, up ahead. Oh, I don't have the equipment to craft more relightable flares, by the way. I need more flares for that. Hey, Oppie. You've never cared about any of the zone's stories and superstitions. So, why now? What's in this for you? What I do is not and has never been any of your business. You're asking us to trust you, so yes. It's our business now. How about this? You two sign off and count orbs or whatever it is you like to do, and I'll get the driver to the mass hallucination source myself. Excuse me? No, 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 no. Tobias found this remnant. This is his discovery. Sure. And I'll send you a nice gift basket to mark the occasion. But I won't let anyone interfere with this. Was well, a bit steeper than I expected. We either throw everything we can at this thing, or we lose this chance, and the answers to the mass hallucination are gone forever. This isn't like one of your little Sasquatch hunts. I'm not letting you get your tinfoil pseudoscience anywhere near this. This is too damn important to me. It sure didn't seem too important earlier, when you messed up and nearly killed the driver. You wanna play that game? You really wanna talk about our track records? Screw you, Oppie. I'd rather run this remnant into the ground than work with either of you. I forget it. We're wasting our breath with this old man. There's gotta be another way. She's out of her mind! I can't do this! I... Look... If you want to waste your precious time picking apart bird droppings and squinting at constellations, by all means, follow their lead. 
I were better off without them. Trust me. I'll get you through no matter what. This really is my last chance. All right. I trust them. Something about this place is calling me, even though it probably doesn't have any special loot. No, it's a completely normal place, isn't it? Oh, hey, a flare. Is that enough to make a flashlight? Nope, need one more flare. Honk honk. I'm trying to change stations. But the station doesn't seem to be changing. Well, it is. It's just not changing the number. tube, which typically has dumpster pearls. No, oh, this one doesn't. Still, red paint for the first time. Oh, no. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. about those radar dishes there. Oh, this looks like a special building. It's one of these with the transmuters inside. Sorry if you can't see anything. I can barely see anything. into electronics. I'm good.
Got the pneumatic tube. One of those. Taking a shortcut. Okay, I suspect there's going to be a big storm as soon as I activate this. Let's get ready to go. Alright, we're in business. Stabilizers are coming online, and the way looks clear, but I'm also getting spikes. The stability in your region is tanking. Get out of there. Fast! What's the best route? Probably... This way. Oh, it's gonna be a bit of a drive. Come on, come on, don't spin out. Oh, the right left got me. All right, no, please don't go into the electricity. All right, we're good. A bit worried about the storm catching up with us, but we're about to hit proper road. It's going to be a lot easier going from there. Man, I need a better engine. This thing is sluggish. Okay, we're going to be airborne for a second. Wait, no, I can go around.
think we're gonna be all right. I think it's time for me to turn off and go into the woods. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. Oh man, that's nerve-wracking. Seeing that red just closing in. Five point one stable energy. Nice. Nice work out there. The sector stabilizers are fully operational. You've got a straight shot toward the expansion wall. One more thing. You may want to consider armoring up a bit. Once you cross that wall, the mid zone is another beast altogether. The mid zone crossing. Yeah, we got to we got some work to do before that. Oh my god, look at these glowing little things! I think those must be coming from the recycled, um, dumpster pearl. Look at those fluffy, soft, glowing little clouds. Oh, I don't know if they just look like I want to mush them, or if they look delicious, or maybe both. They even make a squishy noise when you pick them up. They seem to have a new fax. We've been trying to reach you about updating your tickets in... Well, I researched the Turbo Light engine, which compared to the carbureted engine is less fuel efficient, but significantly more powerful. However, unfortunately, I don't have the things to actually craft it. I need 42 Thermosap crystals, and I have three. Gonna have to work at that one. Now we need to find a way through the wall into the middle zone, which seems to be through here, but I need to find the pathway to get here. So how about we do just a general abbreviated looting mission to here, judging by the conditions. I don't think there's going to be anything particularly interesting. So let's just knock it out, mostly off camera. I'll show you any highlights. Let's do it. The topography is really interesting. Look, all the roads end in the center here, like this was a crater or something. As if a blast happened here. We've got two power sources. The arc device needs different charge levels to overcome the conditions for a gateway. You'll have to feed anchors to the arc device until it's satisfied, and she'll tell you how many she needs at any given time. Bastard. Got me. A little bit. The remnants are like us in a way. Those of us who chose to stay behind, we are as discarded and forgotten as they are. And by chose to stay, you mean actively defying government orders to evacuate? Then yes. You remember how we went without electricity for four months to dodge the clearing crews? Uh, there's, like, what? Only a hundred of us left? If even that. Frankly, I'm surprised so many of us were unable to move on, for one reason or another. Oh, speak for yourself. I'm here for the hunt. Hey, even better now, there's no one to get in our way. So this is the center. It's not a crater. It is sunken, though. But it's just a foggy little... I don't, I don't know what you'd call it. it. Doesn't seem like a bomb went off, and yet, the fact that all the roads just end means this must have been caused by an anomaly or, you know, zone instability. Hey, driver, not to be a downer or nothing, but, uh, I'm wondering what we do if you can't find a way out of the zone. They got themselves over the wall. They'll find a way to survive here like the rest of us. Or not. Won't be my problem at that point. I'd hardly call what we're doing here surviving. Ugh, look, hey, both of 
see you always going on and on about putting up with this, ensuring that. There's more to life than that, you know. You, for example, Arpy, you're brilliant. You control fundamental forces of nature with your fingertips. Both of you did. <sighs> Slow down there, kid. We were scientists, not superheroes. Boy, I mean, look, hey, to someone who was all thumbs when it came to science, they're one and the same. I just don't understand why you're wasting away here, borrowed away in the zone. Both of you, you're sitting on so much lost potential. Potential is a carrot on a stick for the young. An illusion to keep you forging on when you should have given up long ago. Nothing had more potential than limb technology. And look what it did to the Olympic Peninsula. What I did. Look around. We're stuck here. For good. All we can do is survive. Everything else is moot. I forgot what a charmer you are, Arpy. An absolute living ray of sunshine and optimism. New log. Anomaly encounters number four. No, this isn't like that hat guy. This is something else. I never see the face, but it's always a figure. A shadow. Kind of fuzzy and gray. A bunch of us have all had the same kind of dreams now. We'll be in the forest somewhere. The figure is always beside us, hard to see. It points towards something. And when we wake up, there's always something where it had pointed. In the real life version of that place. One time it was this nest of stuff like frog spawn. Another time it was the first crawler in the zone. And once it was... It was what was left of Jack. Oh, Jesus. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if that's real and something I actually encounter. And because I know that possibility is real, it's freaked me the hell out. No, no, that thing you saw was not Bigfoot. Never was, never will be. Don't let Tobias and Francis fill your head with that nonsense. 2.5 stable energy. New facts. Clearwater, April 20th, 1969. New developments today in the shocking case of the radioactive possum controversy. Local man Lyle McCroot says he knows what it is that causes the possums to fly. As well at... As well at to speak with the voice of late President Lawrence... I finally researched the electrician's kit, made one, and now I can fix that trunk closing causing the horn to honk quirk. We still have another quirk that I still haven't discovered. Well, I think I'm going to end the episode there. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to continue to explore and map the outer zone. <laughs>